All right, it's the mics are open. My name is G Money. Andy Young. Ashley. Now, us guys right here at the mics are open, you know we're always ready to put you on to the latest time savers. Now, we've teamed up this week with Odoo, which is a super dope software that can help you get your hustle even more efficient. In the most simplest terms, Odoo is a software with multiple apps that allows you to manage different aspects of your business. It could be sales, inventory, projects, or so much more. It's all in one and it's super easy to use. Now, now, as I can tell you, one of the hardest things to get started as an entrepreneur is getting your website done. Mm -hmm. And my mind was blown when I found out that Odoo has this app that can help you build a website quickly and easily. The Odoo website builder is so simple, quick, and comes with AI. I kid you not, it's one of the most enjoyable ways to design a website. I've no, I'm not even a technical guy. <laughs> and I'm able to design a website, all courtesy of Odoo, man. Now, the interesting thing is that it guides you through the whole process. So you're not alone. You define the goal you want to achieve with your website. You choose a color palette or insert your own logo. Add pages and features, then choose a theme and your website is ready to be customized. Just drag and drop the blocks, add some text, change the colors. If you don't believe me, try it out for yourself absolutely free. Now, above the simplicity and the speed, the first Odoo app that you get is free for life. So when you choose the Odoo Website Builder app as your first app, it's free for life, including hosting and support. You can literally build a modern website for your business all for free. And as if that's not enough, Odoo gets you a custom domain of your choice free for one whole year. It's literally unbelievable. Mm. You just have to try the website, Bill. I mean, we're getting to the peak of this digital era. Every business needs a website. Even you, 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 you. Even you need a website. So make sure that you click the link in the description below and get started today with your Odoo website builder. Bam! Chop, Let's chop. start today's pod. The mics are blood clot open. Check, check, check. Select accent for the podcast. <laughs> Calvin, Calvin always late. Welcome back to the mics are open. My name is Ashley. Oh, I'm G Money. <laughs> Andy Young. You know what sidetracked me? I just opened Twitter on this thing. Mm. Look at doesn't that piece of chicken look so good? Someone. Oh, you're watching Boyna's clips. Someone's eating. Ch <laughs> Who's Boyna? Let me see. You don't know Boyna? No. Bro. That's Boyna. I don't know. You Have you ever been to... swallowed up, bro? <laughs> Have you been swallowed? <laughs> Have you been swallowed up? <laughs> okay, so she's eating chicken. Yo, she, she's an amazing content creator. Oh, yeah. Because, ah. um, she's big on food, like food TikTok and food content. Mm. She's really big on it. But the most surprising thing is for... Um, and I hope I'm not going to be offensive in my navigation around this conversation. Because going. it has to do with how she looks like, you know. For example... Um, you wouldn't expect maybe someone of a certain stature to be eating maybe a lot, a lot, a lot of food. Because okay. even me, I'm being asked, Andy, it's a kulo to nakule nenda wapi. Where is all this food right, going? Right. So if she sits down for one sitting, she a whole eats. meal, obliteration. Is bro. she kidding? Yes, yeah. she is. Oh, wow. So that's how she blew up on social media. I just, I just saw her eating chicken. That chicken, I, I know it's a chicken. The chicken looks so good. <laughs> looks that's good, what good. distracted you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how you guys doing? How's the week been so far? Eat and all of that? Like, a funny week where we have a holiday in the middle of the week? Um, no, Um. let's press play from last week's podcast. Uh, you said you were going out of Nairobi oh, uh, yes. for the weekend. Yes. And Ashley was planning to, you wanted to do a road trip yes. with the big bad boy. <laughs> yes. Yes. And Ashley wanted to Dandia. Uh -huh. So I think you guys need to fill us up on what happened over the okay. weekend. So before we even do that, yeah. we're not on set. We're at Odu. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. As you probably heard us just talk about Odoo, of course. If you're if you're gonna build a website like right now, like during the course of this podcast, just go to the Odoo website. They have an amazing free website builder there, and uh, all the details are there. We've been talking about Odoo, so yeah, you'll you'll see what I go on. All right, so road trip. Yes. Ash didn't come. I didn't come. Uh, yeah, but it was. Damn, so, I'm sorry, Ash. <laughs> but okay, well. Well, Ash didn't come on the trip. But um, I, 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 don't, I don't know. You I, can't I, speak of anywhere else. I can't speak anywhere else. Wow. I see. Well, I so see. That valid. So for me, um, like the, the trip was twofold. Was A, to go to coast and just like have a couple of days on coast. Mm -hmm. Watch uh, one of my good friends play uh, in the finals of the, of the championship rugby uh, and they won. 
Nice. Shout out to South Coast Pirates. Big up myself in Kenya Cup next season. Um, but outside of that, it was to conquer my own mental block of driving outside of Nairobi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because none of my last two cars have gone outside of Nairobi, as far as I know. Unless maybe when Kevin has it. But, um, <laughs> but also maybe because there's a lot of potholes in Nairobi. Yay. So the car did not make it out of Nairobi because of those potholes. It depends what... Uh, we're not talking about oh. potholes, are we? <laughs> are, are you more confident driving around with your new, with your car? Um, with your new car? No, this, this car is beautiful. And um, like I always play I always play things down. Mm. But um, I'm really happy with this with this car. We, it drove to, to Diani, no worries. We did it in like... I mean, we stopped. Mm. In, uh, in Mombasa and stuff, but like, it was like eight hours, eight and a half hours. That's not bad. Any potholes you discovered well, in, in didn't Mombasa? Pull, I, didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't fall into any potholes, uh. but anyway, so, <laughs> moving swiftly. Wait, did you drive all the way by yourself? Oh, no, 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 no. You, you like switched? I, no, 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 I, I drove halfway mm. and names we shall rename, name <laughs> Protect the innocent. Protect the innocent. <laughs> <laughs> Drove the other way, the other half. Oh, man. But yeah, it was a very interesting trip. Um, it, it, I feel like now I can, I, I, I'm confident enough to just drive to the, the new keys. Mm. and Because uh, there are places that don't have airports. Mm. Yeah. So my knowledge of Kenya has been always determined is there an airport there so it's Eldoret it's Kisumu wow, but you've been mm. knowing all these Mombasa. years bro we only have like three airports in yeah this exactly <laughs> so now I can do the I can do the Nanukis I can do yeah. the the funny funny places that don't have airports let me do you know you strike me as such a random person like you see how you pick up an interest or a hobby you you strike me as the person who maybe two years down the line from now the same way you've discovered or rather now you're acting on this passion you might now start getting into aviation and go like, okay, I'm gonna now I want to fly myself to maybe Bye. the new keys you know, and the coasts. The funniest thing about all that is, I think about four or five years ago, mm. I was really bang on getting like a PPL really? license. Because I, I fear small planes. Mm. So for me, usually when, when I fear something, the only way to, 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 to beat Overcome it, it yeah. is, to, do is it. to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know my I mean? fear women. And funny enough, actually. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I hear you. Sa- safest, safest planes here. Mm. <laughs> but my folks actually usually tell me the safest planes you can actually be in are the smaller ones. Really? What yeah. did we learn today, kids? I, anyway, no, you see what, it, <laughs> what that, the thing Shut is. Up. The thing with the small planes is that you feel every, everything. Everything. True. Mm. Like the reason that I have such a fear of um, small planes is that when I was overseas, I had to go really quickly from London to Liverpool, and I I, I flew from Liverpool to London after the turbulence on that flight. I was like, never, never again. Again, and I've never taken a small plane since. Because when you walk out of that plane, your back hurts. Your legs hurt, like everything hurts. It doesn't even look comfortable. It's it's not. Damn. But but I have to conquer that fear. But yeah, I think for me, one thing I will say is that in in just moving around, I feel I feel like in Nairobi we've got life wrong. How I so? feel I feel mm. like Nairobi is actually a big con. Like it's the big city. It's where everything happens. It's where we do our thing. But I really feel that like people outside of Nairo- Nairobi, they may not have the access and all the mm. stuff that we have. But I really think they're living their best lives. Because honestly, if you go anywhere outside of Nairobi, they have the time of their lives. Like they don't care about what anybody thinks. They don't necessarily think about, you know, what. I beg to. Not even consequences my, my, necessarily, bro. but they're just living the best lives, knowing that this is. I'm living for myself, bro, not necessarily for anybody else. My brother was in shags the other day. And my was getting to bed at 10 o'clock, fam. Like, <laughs> yo, no distractions. I mean, well. Like, but you on. see, he has, he has the knowledge of the city. Like, but he now, has that with him, bro. But now, when, you, when you're going to sleep in this house, mm. which doesn't have electricity, and you have to mm. wait till morning to charge your phone, I think there's something cool about that. Don't paint that picture first of all, because <laughs> oh, that's okay. not happening. <laughs> You're not going to bed with no light or anything. But anyway, I feel like the people who are there because of what they know, it's, it's that situation of because it's unknown for you, you don't know that you're taking it for granted until mm. you go somewhere else mm. where it's not the norm and you realize, damn, I was taking this for granted. Like mm. back in the days when you when you go to Shags and it's a pit latrine instead of, you know, that toilet to like, see it on your leg. Man, 
now i miss my washroom you know mm. now i miss my mm-hmm. toilet seat and all that it's the same thing cuz to them that's a norm i'm not right. saying uh, like that's the situation per se right now just a random example so your homie who's had this experience of city life ameshiba he's fed up mm. he's had enough that for him would be a good switch up you know that's why people mm. build in the shags like my retirement home electricity everything mm. but the environment yeah. i have some grass i have some trees right i have a garden over there i have some acres of land i have some coffee mm. growing over there mm-hmm. so i feel like it's it's a balanced thing because i can bet that because when i was when we were living in meru the only thing i wanted to do to do was just come to nairobi mm. right, right that's right. the only thing i wanted to do just come to nairobi i'm only here on the holidays so i've had a taste and a feel of what life in nairobi could be like right. so when you go back to meru i have to wait for another three months for a conversation uh, of going to nairobi to come up for me to get excited mm. so it's right. an exchange but isn't it beautiful when you go to now the the bundus after you've come to nairobi like it's the it is it yeah, is it's, completely it's beautiful the mm. air is fresher starting from the it's, air it's the mm. air yo mm. there is fresher like the scenery is more beautiful Vienyeji. it's it's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's also more calm it's more relaxed like you don't I, have i just think that for me like i i honestly believe that inshallah you know we have life and things are good i feel that like for me it's literally just a beach house somewhere mm. like that's it like i don't i that, don't that, that's yeah. picture perfect for that's me. i don't, like i don't feel you know like one of the things that i always tell people is that i don't have the pressure of of having to go back to the village to, to build a house mm. yeah that's like that's not on me you know people are like oh, yo go back to i don't know ci or somewhere and i'm going to build my house in the village and, ah, and that's nonsense mm. for me it's like end of the day what is a realistic goal i can set myself mm-hmm. that i can achieve that i think i can achieve relatively easier mm. easy rather mm. and for me i've seen apartments like beachfront apartments especially in diani mm-hmm. um modern build pool secure private beach yeah. going for like prices that are literally so competitive mm-hmm. half of what you'd pay for mm. building that house in the village you got the beach at the end of your of your of your thing i mean fam there's a ch- there's there's chandarana there's Carefo what else do you want if you get sick you go to Mombasa mm. like i mean this one there's an airstrip if you need to if be evacuated there's an airstrip just there you can fly you to Nairobi if you need to i feel like that. i feel like like and we we tend to look at the, the later stages of life as in all of these things that i've achieved as opposed to the quality of life mm. for me but i also feel like the bundus have now started coming up like they mm. have everything no it's true the bundas like facts the, the countryside the countryside the bundas right the, the bundas bund- have been coming up bundas as well yo, they're coming up <laughs> they're both coming up <laughs> hey, let me tell you like my shacks in meru mm. yo in every single like little it's it's not a village mm. what can i even call it like a little a segment of after every like five kilometers right there's a shopping center mm. there's a hospital there's a school there's it's a church modernized. Like, everything mm. that you literally have to walk out of your house walk down the okay i mean it's a couple of kilometers away mm. but everything is so established and it's growing the roads are beautiful like you don't have to struggle with bad roads unless you're like entering to now <coughs> your shag shags like your, your sneaky home. links place uh-huh, exactly. <laughs> so i feel like it's almost the same thing because personally mm. i'd build in meru any day mm. in nyanuki as well any day nyanuki yeah could in, be a vibe right mm. in nyeri as well any day because it's literally establishing itself and you have everything going for you ebo ni kulize so kenda meru wanga utafunike tepa maybe na grow pale kwa shamba you don't let me tell you i know how to tune them but you don't chew it's like no una to dang una to danganya we na kunga pale na sneaky link kwako kenyeje mwanze mkomiti mbaya aluta dia asubuhi let me tell you the mm. meru man Hey. <laughs> hey. Andy, have you ever experienced this? Have you ever experienced this? Have you ever dropped one of your favorite cologne bottles in the house and it's broken? Have you ever uh, have you perfume? I was going to bring this up. No. You you put up a tweet, right? I don't think we I don't think as men we talk about this enough. So let me tell you a funny story. I was going for an event with one of my friends mm. and they came over to my house. And I I mean, it was Kidogo, one of their cologne. Mm. And it dropped in my house. Yeah. The guy literally he collected the glass and mm. wiped the floor with his shirt. Mm. I was like it's not it's not that serious. He's like it ah. Is. It <laughs> is. But it at is. the same time I was just like th- thank you. You've made my house smell really good mm. for the next like two weeks. Mm. 
everything reminds me of her. <laughs> what happened? I, I dropped it smells so. like another nigga was here. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Like, listen, you can't invite anybody else in that Bro, house. Mm. Speaking of which, I um shout out to Emmanuel. Uh, he's an actor from Nigeria. If you're if you're any, um, it could be C rather. He's been at my house for like he was at my house for like two weeks because he's he's going to New York. He's actually made a really good movie about sickle cell, mm. and uh, he's just putting all of the dots in the place, all the things to get it released in Kenya first, and then Lagos, and then um, Tanzania. Nice. Um, so you know he's been in my house for like almost two weeks. He's he's gone to uh, New York now, bra. To this day, he's left like. He left on Saturday. Today is, we're filming. It's like what Wednesday, mm -hmm. bro. Your house still he, smells like him. I, <laughs> <laughs> so I went into the spare room. Like this, <laughs> the spare room does not need air freshener for the next. It's six okay. Months. Bro, he, he needs to give us a plug, bro. Bro, what is it about yeah. Nigerians and and their their sense that lasts so long? You tell us. Been, I don't know. You've been there a couple of times. You have a couple of. I don't have. Maybe maybe I have one Nigerian mm. acquaintance. That's the closest I'm getting to the community. But actually, that's a good point, you know, because I remember a few years ago, a pal of mine came and they bought me some some mask in wood. this mm. wood in this bottle thing, uh. and I used to leave it in my car for those those moments, you know, bruh. Tell them to it's bro. Until that thing, once you put it on in the morning, it's there. I don't know what they do, but that, that they get keeping. That's what they are doing. They get keeping. <laughs> they get keeping. They need to stop it. Bruh, when you, if you live in an estate like where there's Nigerians, bruh, you can tell. The, eleva the elevators. True. Bro. Elevators Not the noise. also, it's, it's Nigerian. <laughs> the noise too, but yeah. Hey, Nigerians, Somalis, mm. Habibis. Like Habibis usually leave that scent for a while. Mm. Like I have a friend who's, I mean, back and forth from Dubai, mm. Nairobi, and she has that, it's, it's a oud scent yeah. for females. That thing lasts. Like yeah. once she leaves the couch, it will be there for the next like but week. Tell her my relationship with her can last that long. But I also feel that when it comes to like scents or like colognes and stuff, like I feel that, like especially when you go to places like Dubai and stuff, like I feel that some of the the lesser known brands mm. are actually nicer. Mm. Like when you like, I feel like if I found this scent that was like not like a top end scent, whatever, and I and I like as I did a few years ago. Bro, I wouldn't even tell anybody what it was. When they'd be mm. like, yo, what's that? I'd be like, oh, it's, just, it's called mm. Byron, Keep Byron Keep Sneakers. Look what I watch, man. But you, know, but you see, the thing is, like, I find also, yeah. don't you find in Nairobi that once somebody finds a bomb scent, everybody. everybody is wearing it. But what I think is, everybody has their scent. Like, I'm not going to hop onto someone else's scent because mm. I know it's not my personality. Right. Because for your personality, you have to match your scent. Like for mm. my scent, it's mm. like a, it's not even flowery. Mm. It's more like a, a fresh, mm. uh, more like exotic scent. It's it's mm. kind of spicy at the same time, right, right, right? Right. So everybody has their scent. So I'm not about to jump onto anybody else's scent because it's mm. it, no, I get it. Because even when when I'm getting like fresh perfume or when I'm refilling, I usually get like a small new. Mm -hmm. Scent that I've never used them. Right, I right. love uh, why I usually buy my scents from Sense Kenya. A shameless plug. Because <laughs> um, you've had a long lasting relationship. Anytime I'm uh, refilling, they're like, you should try this. Because you know, now they, they start know. knowing my scents. Mm. It's like uh, when you're working with a the bank, they right, see right, your right. history, Should, yeah. your tendencies, and all that. So they can recommend something. So I think if, if most people would do that, then most people would not be wearing the same sense every other mm. day because yeah. right now the scent that I'm using, I've never had anyone talk about it. Mm. Never had anyone talk about it. Mm. And I discovered and every just time, like this. And when, let me tell you, when Andy comes into the studio in the morning, you know Andy's been in the studio. You smell him. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> he's a, he's, rock man, I eh. can't like, I, I, I <laughs> never, on. you know, I, my toxicity will never be like, yo, Andy, you smell oh, really good. <laughs> But like it's a podcast. Andy, you nah, smell but really good, bro. I'm back in a day, you've already told me I'm smelling good. So I don't need yours. The whole I'm good. <laughs> but you know what? It's, I, I, and also, it's a top tier compliment from man. Oh, no, yeah. And I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah, no, when it, I'm, when I'm yeah. saying, hey, you smell nice, I, I feel good about that. Back. Yeah, man. It's yeah. a good one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Guys, um, two things I want us to touch on today. Bruh, f first, let's start with the positive before we go to the negative. The first one is, of course, hip hop. Drake. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to take it there? Not Drake. Right? I mentioned Drake. Sorry, J. Cole, J. Cole and K Kendrick. Let me set up. Let me set up. I saw a tweet today that said, 
J. Cole has J. Cole has um, given light-skinned Negroes the biggest L ever by wow. apologizing to Kendrick Lamar. So let's, let's set the scene and give some context. Mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar, by the way, I feel he's like that friend you have in a crew, and I've said it, I've said it on radio. I feel like he's that guy in the crew who everybody kind of likes, but nobody knows what he's going to do next. Mm. Unpredictable. He's the loose cannon mm. in the crew. Mm. Because out of nowhere, like when I, when I listen to First Person Shooter, um, Drake and J. Cole, I didn't really hear anything that would, should, was offensive to Kendrick. Yep. It was what wasn't said. Mm. Yeah, because... On one hand, see, he, uh, he was talking about the big three. Yes. Yeah. But then later on, he isolates himself and Drake. Mm. So now it's just the two of them. Mm -hmm. Right. So now, I thought it was the three of us. So what happened? Because now he's saying uh, the Spider-Man meme, it's him and Drake. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now, where is the third man right now? Right. And also there was, ah. the, there was the conspiracy theory of, on such a record, wouldn't it make sense to have K-Dot? On the anthem as well mm -hmm. right so maybe something happened behind the scenes that we but are not aware of for mm. him not to be on the song because it would make more sense for it's the three of us let's open to a record all of us have worked together before mm -hmm. Poetic but, justice. Didn't, but, but didn't drake say he's never gonna do another song with kendrick at some point after control now that's now you've brought drake into the picture now from a different song <laughs> Poor Drake. You, you, you have yeah. to no well, so, it, so, it so, gets murky now yeah so basically because i if you remember when Control came out, another freestyle that came out of nowhere, yep. where Kendrick Lamar was just like, I'm talking to Jermaine and or whatever he said in that, in that song, right? I can't remember, it's a long time ago. So Kendrick has always been, to me, the outlier mm. of, 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 of that situation. Mm. But like you said, there's so many subtexts, so many things going on, because for, for when, when, when Kendrick popped up on Future and Metro Boomin's album. Mm. What's it called? Like the song's called Like That? Like That. Like yeah. That, right? Mm. And dropped his verse that dissed Drake and J. Cole. Mm -hmm. mm. First of all, it was an uncredited appearance on Metro Boomin's album. Yeah. yeah. Like if you if you were that guy who went to Spotify and looked at the track list then you, and who see it. you didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're just there bopping to the album, then you're yeah. like, that oh. Mrs. Kendrick mm. out of nowhere. And the yeah. beat is crazy. And the beat what? is crazy. Mm. Yeah. Out of nowhere, there's there's Kendrick. So then the first thing that I thought was, mm. wait a minute, Drake and Future mm. have done a couple albums together. Yes. So is there is there beef between Drake and Future? There seems to be the, like apparently yeah. there is. Also, mm. back to J. Cole Kendrick. J. Cole Kendrick are always put in the same category, right? Mm. It's always, it's almost like Tupac Biggie comparison, mm. right? Mm. Now it's a J. Conscious Cole Kendrick. Guys, yeah. Exactly. Mm. Now it's a J. Cole Kend uh, Kendrick comparison. Mm. And a lot of times people always lean into J. Cole, mm. considering um, the amount of features he's also been in. Mm. Like he's featured in so many other mm. people's um, jams. Yeah. Until he was just like, I'm not doing any more features. Mm -hmm. Then he came back and he was just like, ah, fuck it. I'm going to do features. features, right? Yeah. Right. And I remember this was such a big conversation on uh, um, Hip Hop Chart yeah, Show. Because we're yeah. just like, he's going to come back mm. on right. being a feature on other people's jams. Yeah. Um, and I think you mentioned this on the show as well. Kendrick doesn't necessarily have jams jams. Like, mm. he, has great, he has great albums. He has great jams. But it's only one out of like 10 one mm. out of like 20. His projects actually, don't do as well as Cole's. They don't yes. do as, as well as Cole's. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then Cole went ahead and brought up Dreamville. Mm. Oh, now Dreamville mm. changed the game. Because mm. when you think about Dreamville, you're thinking about Earth Gang, you're mm. thinking about mm. um, Ari Lennox, you're yeah. thinking about J.I.D. Like yeah, you're thinking about so many other artists mm. and he plays a part in Maybe actually... Maybe Erasta? Yes. Yeah. Mm. You're actually thinking about him producing that music and him featuring in that music as well. Mm. So he mm. has so much more leverage than Kendrick at right. the end of the day. Yeah. That's why when he came out and he was just like, listen, your first single, eh, your second single, your third hit was now the one that mm. made you who you are. Mm. Last one was not it. it. Said the second one put people to sleep. Uh -huh. <laughs> then then the third one, they sleep. gassed it. <laughs> it, it, gassed it. Your last one was now the one that made you eat his and, and, and you know what was crazy about that joint with um, that J. Cole joint? The way he interplayed all of Jay-Z's lyrics that Jay-Z mm. used against Nas in oh, Takeover. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, that's a one hot album every blah, blah, blah. It yeah. be a habit and stuff. So so there's so, much, there's so much to unpack. And of course, mm. as lovers of the music... I think that we were we were low key excited when Kendrick dropped that verse. I, I 
Speaking for myself, oh. it was, like I don't think anybody who loves music or loves hip hop was like, wow, why would Kendrick say oh, that? Yeah. Guys, are, guys already. This is what they've been waiting for. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but you'll never think like this are this are two very chill guys. Like no, Kendrick is not chill, bro. No. I'm, I'm telling Kendrick, you, as as Jiman is saying, and it's 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 the. Allow me to use this because I'm coming to embrace it more because it's becoming a very prevalent and very evident issue. It's the duality, even talks about it, the, mm. the Gemini duality. Like right now, it's okay. war time. I'm choosing war. Yes. You know, like I, I'm a Gemini. You know, mm. it's a dual thing. I could choose peace, but mm. not right now. Right. right now, I'm going with the Because he can be a peaceful guy. Yes. We all know Kendrick. Kendrick can be a peaceful guy. But. He, he's lethal as well. Mm. Very unpredictable. He's a Gemini. And he's a yes. Gemini, oh bro. My <laughs> him and Kanye be Gemini. Uh, by the way, you know, we can just end this podcast. <laughs> it's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> the reason why Kendrick is the way he is is because he's a Gemini. <laughs> Gemini. Yeah, so he will embrace uh, his creativity on both sides of the spectrum for mm. him. He's not afraid to do that. That's right. why the people who are surprised were surprised, like, damn. Well, you have to end. Uh, I'd understand the guys who are surprised because. Cole just gave you props on a record with Drake. So after getting your flowers, why are you what? coming for the person who was giving you but your it's flowers? The it's the same thing he did when he dropped Control. It was out of nowhere. Hence mm. again, he's the guy in the crew who's quiet and goes to the bar and gets into a fight. My theory is this. Them niggas have a WhatsApp group. They strategize <laughs> this shit. Right now we're just waiting for Drake's move. Like I, I think they're all in on this cause. And we haven't really addressed the issue. J. Cole, after dropping a diss record, Apologize. apologizes about dropping a diss record. Uh, no. After insinuating that, he has tea that if he decided to drop, it's it rap. could probably end your career right now. Yeah. You don't just come out guns blazing like that. And then later on, now that's a Gemini thing. Later on, it's a completely, it's like, yo, wh who what? was that other J. Cole? And what did you do to him? How do you guys feel about J. Cole actually apologizing? Piss. Goated. Stop. Thank Piss. you. Goated. No. Goated. Listen, I already told you this. Goated. No J. Cole slander. Goated. No what J. do you Cole mean? No J. Cole slander Goated. will be accepted. Meh. It takes, it takes a man-man. Like, Meh. <laughs> Let me tell you something. No, it takes a man-man. Let me tell you guys something. Do you know what are the biggest problems that we have in life right now in tell society? Us. Tell us. It's because there is no repercussions for when people act uh, here stupid. here we go again. Like, for example, like, you can go on, someone can go on Twitter right now and say the worst thing about someone, someone else. Mm. But they say it because no one's going to punch you in the face. We're not in the era of, oh, you said this about me? Let me come and find you and punch you in the face. So because there's no, like, there's no re repercussions for when you act up, mm. everyone is just so moist these days. Oh, my <laughs> moist. God. So, <laughs> so, so, so for me... So soft. So moist. <laughs> so for me, my thing is this, like, end of the day here, it's hip-hop. You know the tenets of hip-hop. Hip-hop has... People talk about Biggie and Tupac. This thing was going from back in the day mm. when you had Melly Mel and you had these guys, Cool Mo D against LL Cool J. Mm. This is nothing new. And it's all about wordplay. So when, so when Kendrick comes out and says what he says, and then J. Cole, first of all, this is not Biggie and Tupac. This Biggie and Tupac, Suge Knight was a legit gangster. No, yeah, he was. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Like that was like that wasn't okay. even a pretend. That's not even a pretend <laughs> shit. I signed the contract. Nigga. Them, yeah, them, exactly. <laughs> Proper shit, right? Yeah. So it's one of those ones where like, okay, when people are, like, you know, J Cole is good. I need to apologize because we lost two pack and shut the hell up. No, this is you not two pack and big. <laughs> No. You shut J. Cole and Kendrick. Let I'm, me ask you I'm, something. But what, let, okay, me, let me finish. Let me, let, me, let me finish. Let me, okay. let me finish. Okay, go on, go on. So the point I'm making in hip hop, you don't go out there and drop those bars and then go on stage at your own concert and be like, oh, by the way, this is not my energy. I, I really think that, you know, put your hands up if you think that Kendrick Lamar tries. is a dope. <laughs> You're so moist. No, they put that, a finger listen, in the sky. As if moist. moist I'm on. just moisturizing so <laughs> I can get into it. Okay. That, that's Jay Cole on your lips right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen. Pause. She's been having a crash on Jay Cole for the longest time ever. Of course Andy she's knows. on his side, bro. Jay Cole. Listen, baby he daddy can number do one. No, baby daddy number one. He yeah. can do no wrong in my eyes. Everything he does is perfection. J. Cole is to, moist. I, I, and I love and him it's moist. Okay. I love him just as moist. <laughs> Listen, if he can be moister, <laughs> okay. is that a word? So let me but also, wait, also, the fact that he can actually drop it 
might delete later. We ha- that's he. That's exact, bro. Might that's exactly what later? is happening. This is some. He did it exactly in acting. Like he, I do something, I tell you something, and then I take down the post. This that is, was a might delete might later kind of energy. This was very strategic from him because he knew I'm gonna I'm okay. gonna mess this guy up. Let, let, I'm not gonna mm-hmm. I'm not gonna take I'm not gonna take him out. Let her cook. Let me cook. Let her cook. I'm not gonna take him out, but I'm gonna show him what I can do, and whatever I say is actually gonna make sense. And a lot of people were just like, to be honest, he, he has he has a po- doesn't he have a point? Yes yeah, or no? Wait. And then he comes back and he's just like, listen. That's not who I am. I feel bad that he took me out of my character. And listen, I shouldn't have done it, but I did it. I, 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 I did it, and I accept that it. That makes it worse. No, it no, doesn't eh, make eh, it eh, worse. Eh, you know eh, why it makes eh, it so much better? Because he's acknowledged what he's actually done. It's like, it's like someone, okay, no, actually, wait. It's like someone punching you, and then they're just like, uh, damn, I shouldn't have punched you, but you deserved it, you know? So even at the end of the day, you're just like, oh, Damn, the fact that this person has actually apologized to me mm. means that they care enough for my craft. Listen, Zimani, no, wait, me, wait. And for me as an individual to come back and be like, you deserve that shit, don't ever do... He's putting him in his... Pi- not Kwekarada. <laughs> Z. Putting him in his place so that he can never do that shit again. Let, Let me ask you something. Is it easier to fight or make peace? Easy Thank you for make, coming to my TED talk. It's, it's <laughs> easier. It's easier to. Fi- it's easier to fight. Exactly. To fight. So who is who is making the most grown up decision here? All right. Let me let me give you guys. Uh, a- hey, wait. I was just getting Jay started. Cole, Jay Cole. Oh, go, go. I was just getting started. Finish, go, go. You know. So let's let's take it back to uh, J Cole dropping or seems like responding to what. Kendrick had dropped, and Kendrick on like that barely even touched on Cole. He was just going at Drake, Drake, mm-hmm. Drake, 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 right? So J Cole coming out of quote unquote the blues yeah. for whatever uh, what do we call them stray bullets that came my way? <laughs> yeah, I have to, I have to return some fire. So he does what he does on a project because he was already in album mode, bro. He was already in this. This seems like something he had to go back into studio real quick, cook yes. it up, because he called it the seven minute drill, mm-hmm. yes. right? Cook it up real quick. Ongeza koyo project, my delete later. That's the energy I'm on. And then later on, come to realize, damn, I was out of character for that. So let me ask you, bro, when you were born, you found the tenets of hip hop already established, uh-huh. right? You came, you played according to the rules, right? So now that someone has broken the rules and a goat at that has broken the rules and decided enough of that this okay. is this is a different direction that we can take of course the whole community is going to come up like yo that is not hip hop you've lost respect for me mm. the mm. three man race is now down to two man no it's three man in fact add future in that okay. in that conversation right but j cole is j you can't take away what he's already done the kind of impact hey wait the kind of impact that he's already had so if he's here to probably see a different future or a different lane for hip hop then why not create it cause this is going to go down in history as one of the most monumental moments in, in the hip-hop. culture mm. just because of j cole he dropped a diss track and apologized for that shit. and he's been messing with kendrick for the longest time ever he even said it and his fans don't care bro well, Alexa, why? you're still our good bro okay let me yeah. ask a question yeah why is cristiano ronaldo great he's great because he's competitive He's great because he knows that there's another guy out there called Messi who, who's sharing the stage with him in his time. So you know what? Messi might be the more talented, as in natural talent, but I'm going to have to work twice as hard. I'm going to have to work twice as hard. I'm going to have to break all these records. I'm going to score all these goals. I'm going to play football till I'm 99 years old. All of that stuff because of his competitive nature. Hip-hop by nature. But listen, mm. look at the tenets of hip-hop, right? Turntablism. Every year, I don't know if they still do it, they used to have the DMC turntable competition where you 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 you, you battle it out to be the best battle DJ, yeah. right? Yeah. We used to sit down and watch those videos like, wow, these guys are amazing, right? Run DMC. One. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, DMC, yeah. Yeah, mm. you're right. Mm. Gra- graffiti. Mm. All of the trains in New York, not so much now as back in those days, blah, blah, blah. Everybody wanted to be the sickest, illest graffiti artists, right? Yeah. Break dancing. Break dancing, you had crews from different areas of New York City, mm. the Rocksteady crew, the this crew, the that crew, all competing in the parks, competing for dance. 
now we get to on the microphone, yeah? Then you have the MC. Hip-hop is, is competitive by its nature. And the thing, it, it, let me give you an example. Okay. It's like a sound clash mm. in Jamaica. Let's talk about sound clash history, mm -hmm. where you have big sound system to cut dub plates. And bro, you can have a dub plate that says, yo, g money, suck your mother, your mother's this, your mom's that, your blah, 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 mm. yeah, whatever, and this you badly. Mm. At the end of the night, mm. who wins the sound clash? <laughs> Us guys are still popping bottles at the back. Because it's a sound clash. It's the nature of the sound clash thing. So yes, it's monumental that J. Cole has apologized. But is it hip-hop? But is it, does it add to the culture? His album's called Might Delete Later. Yeah. If he was so sorry, I've just opened Spotify. It's Why is there. Seven Minute <laughs> Drill still there? Because it's a bob. There's no way they're taking it down. He's it's not, doing numbers. He's not deleting so then what, are you the talk, project, So bro. then what are you talking about? The fact of the matter is, it's like, if I punch you in the face and say that I'm sorry, it doesn't mean you stay your face ain't being punched. But it doesn't mean I can also take the punch away from you. I've already punched so, you. Uh, so, it's so, so out there. On, so hold on now. Let's just say it's a chess move. What happens when Kendrick um, responds with his hit him up moment? Later on today. See, then it's okay. But I want to challenge you on something uh, that mm. you said. Let's take it back to the, the tenets of hip-hop and even the example that you've given of Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm. Tell me why Messi is good. Because he's good. Exactly. So, Messi being good is not dependent on competition out there. But competition is a filter that has been thrown out there too. It's a lens. Let's look at... Uh, at Messi through this lens of competition. He is good, but even without the competition, is Messi good or not? He mm -hmm. is good. Right. And this is J. Cole. So if I use Messi as the same example and say, Messi doesn't even care about winning. I know he cares about winning, but this is right. a random example. Mm. Let's say he is so good at the sport, but he doesn't care about winning. He just enjoys playing the sport. He's that good. Mm. I feel like that's who J. Cole is. As okay. much as beef and dissing and all that has been a part of the culture for such a long time. And I've said this even on air. J. Cole is not the guy you take to war. J. Cole is the guy you take to a conference to speak sense into some people. Mm. You know. Okay. So J. Cole has carved his own path, his own line of doing... The conscious rap we're talking about, he's the guy who will come and tell you about, you know, wealth, you know, don't be blended by this. Other rappers have told us that, but you don't see J. Cole coming out to flex on you every other time, telling you, I have this, I have that. He's one of the most humble rappers that we have in the game, as much as he's gained so much success, notoriety and all that. But his path is different. That's why I'm saying... His aura, bro, it can't be the same with maybe Drake or Kendrick to come attack you. Nah, I don't expect J. Cole to go attacking people. Yeah. Bruh. I expect him to come preaching World, peace. World he's the Cup middle final. child. He's, he's Jesus. Like, <laughs> let me bring this and this World one together. World Cup final yeah. 2022. Argentina <sighs> versus France. Yes. Right? Yeah. Penalties. Mm. After the first penalty. Come on, we took the first penalty. Any of you guys remember? I don't know who took the first penalty. <laughs> Guy scores. Then it's like... It's okay, it's okay. We're, we're, we're live at Odoo. Lights are being switched off. It's fine. It's okay, right? No, not because we ain't paid the bill, though. <laughs> I just want to let you guys know that, yeah? So it's like, it's, it's a World Cup finals. Um, um, the first penalty shooter goes up, strikes the ball, scores. The crowd goes mad. He then runs to the MC booth like, by the way, I'm sorry. That I scored that goal. It was no, I that's think, an unfair wait, 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 comparison. No, exactly. what do you no, what I was gonna say is, listen, you can't compare football with music because every listen. Oh, stop, stop, stop! Wait. I've realized the lights are motion sensitive. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so. Listen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So you can't necessarily compare music with football. I understand what you're saying, fully understand. But then for music, I feel like with every different artist, with every different genre, it, it plays a part with their personality. It plays a part with their own personal perspective of life as well. Yeah. That's why I can't compare it with football. Also, because I don't know jack shit about football. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but at the same time, they're, football, it, they're here to score. Mm. Music, they're here to create. It's different. It's a different path of creativity. And I fully understand where you're coming from. But at the same time, J, J. Cole, as you were saying, he's a peaceful man. Mm -hmm. He drops when he wants to drop. Mm. He decides what exactly he's going to do. And that's how he's captured his audience. Mm. Same thing as a lot of creatives do. They do what they want to do and what actually feels right to them. And immediately they do that. Immediately they're genuine with um, the audience. Then they captivate them. Right. And then they, they, they pull. And that's exactly why J. Cole fans will never 
actually stray from him mm. because they know exactly what kind of man he is. He keeps it a buck. He, right. he, he's straight, straight up. He's real with it. He's genuine, There's authentic. Th that's the main reason these guys will just be like, oh, you apologized. Oh, listen, me, there's being a, the biggest J. Cole fan, right. so <laughs> I, I applaud him. There's another angle that I read earlier that I've just opened up on this thing. It says that J. Cole apologizing to Kendrick was actually a masterclass in business. Consider the acumen of the hip-hop moguls and you see some of the standout capitalistic, creative and entrepreneurial talents of our era. They have their beefs, their scandals and controversies, but when J. Cole disses Kendrick and when J. Cole apologizes, they make headlines and they make a lot more money. It's all over the media. It's all good business. It's all good, as they say. Strategy. No bad PR. Huh? No bad PR. Mm. But again, Moist. I feel like there's a WhatsApp group. <laughs> and, and I feel like now Drake, Drake will have to take it for the both of them according to strategy. Because mm. if... My homie is down and he's not fighting back. He tried fighting back, but he's he's tapped out of the game. Now I'ma show you. I'm a, yes, this is that superstar moment. This mm. is that LeBron James, that Kobe Bryant, you know, that uh, Steph Curry, you know, or MJ moment like so. I'll carry the whole team. I'm a fire for the for the both of us. So when Drake drops, I feel like now this is business at its finest. Mm. And if he claps back even on behalf of Cole. Now nah, it's gonna be crazy. Let's go, let's go. But again, go. there's a WhatsApp group, they're strategizing, <laughs> they're making their moves, and this is all business at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That's my theory. All yeah, right. but J. Cole goated for this. Definitely. His own it. lane, he's deciding what he's doing, and nobody else can tell him otherwise. And he's laughed that cause that was his confession. Like I had some people in my ears telling me this, because even the opening, I think the opening yeah. line yeah, yeah, in that. the record was. Yeah, I've been receiving calls, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I got a call. Someone, guys in my ears ready to go, like, hey, yo, you got to do something. And he literally said the reason that he actually clapped back is because he heard things. Mm. And people were just like, yo, you got to do it, you got to do it. He wasn't going to do it until people were actually peer pressure. Kids, mm. what do we call peer pressure? What J. Cole just did. Yeah, I, I, I feel like Cole, Cole is a shooter, <laughs> but he's not a killer. Ah. He's not a killer. Kendrick is a killer. Drake is a murderer, bro. <laughs> Drake is a murderer. Do you think, Drake, do you think Drake's going to get involved? He is, he is at the center of this. What do you mean? Do you he, he is at the center he, of this, bro. Do you reckon he reply? He will at his own time. Also, Drake is petty as... Mm. AF. Mm. AF. It's petty, petty. But then they're not going to give us another poetic justice, man. Eh? Oh. No. Was, <laughs> poetic justice was, was, is, is, is gold as a, as a, mm. as a hip hop oh, no. song. Facts, mm. facts. Oh, facts. So yeah. that's the good side of the music. Now the other side of the music. Did oh, wait, so wait, wait. Before we go there, so that means we're never also going to get a Drake and Future project. Recross Crazy. also and follow Drake. So I guess you're not going to get another Drake and Recross. Mick Mill might be in the Right mix. now, do you know who's crying? Who? DJ Kelly, because <laughs> he won't get another one. <laughs> no, now he's gonna try play that guy. Let me bring them together. Yeah, another yeah, yeah. one, another mm. one. You know, we're the best. But yeah, 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 I feel like it's all strategic. It's all business. Fam, some of the jokes about Didi over the last couple of weeks. Like I know we spoke on it briefly a few yeah. weeks ago, mm. but some of the, I, I watched a clip from Andrew Schultz, who's a podcaster, comedian on uh, the Brilliant Idiots. Yeah, Bruh. He went in on Diddy. on Diddy. He said, like, Diddy is the only entertainment guy in L.A. whose house has never been robbed. He was like, because a robber knows if he goes into Diddy's house, <laughs> oh, he weird. might find him naked. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, you know, you walk in. He go, hey, bro, He's being robbed. The, bro, the, bro, the guy goes, you walk into Diddy's house, you, 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 um, um, you find Meek Mill sitting on Diddy's oh, lap. Man. And he said, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? <laughs> and then I'm you, gone. <laughs> you, you walk into, the, you, you walk into the, the, the house as a robber. Then all of the doors... Just, just um, <laughs> close. Oh, then you man. hear, we ain't going mm. nowhere. Mm. <laughs> Bruh, some of the Diddy jokes are crazy. But I wanted, I, I, I decided to, to deep dive a bit more into what some of the allegations are. Because it's like when you hear about sex trafficking, for example, it's like, what is that? Mm. And actually, something as, it can be something as basic as you picking up, uh, you get maybe a, a prostitute or a, or, or a, or a, a lady a or a commercial worker, worker mm. whatever you want to call it, sorry, commercial mm. sex, and flying them from Nairobi to Mombasa mm. with the idea of having a mm. sex party in, yeah. that could also be, in America, that could also be considered as sex, sex trafficking. trafficking. 
Okay. So it's it's crazy. It's crazy when you um when you think about all the all of the stuff. But here's the thing now. What I wanted us to like look on. Mm. Diddy, like R. Kelly, was responsible for some of the greatest moments in music. Fact. Yeah. Bro, I don't know if we can lose the R. Kelly catalog and then now lose the Diddy catalog. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna sell out, bro. This it's is gonna, actually you, the you know, time. You've seen this before. You've seen this story before. You know what's going to happen. Because mm. as long as there's controversy in the picture, the value of everything that is attached to you goes up. Goes up. Mm. You know, he, he let go of the businesses that were around him mm. so that they don't suffer as much loss as, you know, they would if he's accused or if he's found guilty of these things while attached to them. But his catalog, his mm. music... His estate, I feel like everything is gonna shoot up. I, I feel like we know this. Scandal yeah. sells. Always. Scandal Always sells. gets views. Sc the yeah. bangers, man. I'm, I'm sorry, oh, but it's, it, it, the conversation is gonna come back. The and talent now, and the man. Facts. And now what people are gonna do is go back to his catalogs, go back to his music, mm -hmm. and try to like, decipher mm -hmm. oh, what exactly. A fresh perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah a fresh perspective, and mm -hmm. just be like, okay, what exactly what he, was he talking about? So he's getting more listenership. I don't see nothing. He's, like, he's getting more reach, <laughs> yeah, more impressions, more engagement. Like, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, hefty. Yeah. But, so, so the thing about it is, it's like everybody says that R. Kelly was giving signs mm. in his music, was telling you, like, yo, I'm doing this. This is it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Diddy, mm. apparently, like there's a um, there's so much footage and so many songs coming up now where Diddy has said quest questionable things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and done. Even the kids' programs that I see pop up, oh, yeah. where he used to just make a superstar guest appearance on set, and the things like you know back then you don't have that perspective, mm -hmm. and your mm. kids and the parents are like, hey, it's just a show, it's funny. Yeah. But you look at it right now and you're like, okay, no, that's Fuck, weird. That's weird. not even By the like, way, That is straight on weird. Do you know what's crazy? It's mm. like Usher's second, I think it was his second album, right? his first, mm. second album. Like, he has a tune on, his, uh, on it called Can You Get With It? Mm. It's a dope ass slow jam. But now when I think about it in the context of that song being produced by Devante and Diddy and this 13 year old kid singing that song. Mm. Mm. I'm like, ew. It's a bit disturbing. It's, it's weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And um, I don't know. It's the same thing. Like, I, I don't know if you guys have heard about the Nickelodeon scandal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. There's a whole documentary that's come out. Yeah. I used to be a Disney Nickelodeon kid. Mm. Right. But now, like, nothing ever used to click. But now, when you watch them back, you're just like, um, but you, you can also think it's your personal perspective, seeing as, I mean, dirty minds do come into play, mm. right? Mm. Gutter mind. Yeah. But at the same time, you look at it and you're just like, even to someone who does not necessarily have a dirty mind, Bro, you some, definitely see Some it. of the kids, like, when you look at some of those, like, kids' books from, like, back in the mm -hmm. day, mm. they're very questionable. Very. Mm. Even the songs, mm. even the characters, ones of the characters. Oh, gosh, the characters. It's just like, eh, was I seeing this right? Am I it's just that, like, your you brain that has kind of, of advanced, mm. and you're just like, okay, now I see it in a different way. But they were all songs, movies, mm. series. Like, they were all very questionable. And mm. then you come back to now to hear the conception of how these things happen. Right, right. And, and it like, makes sense. Oh, damn. Mm. That makes so much sense. Because, mm. like, the producers of these things, the directors were just a little cuckoo. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, know, it's, I know a lot of the things from our youth, like, when you look at, when you look at them in, like, nowadays terms, you're like, wow. Mm. And I think that's what a, lo a lot of these artists have been caught in that spin. Mm. Because things that they could get away with like 20, 30 years ago, they can't get away with now. Because yeah. Diddy used to throw parties in, in London. Mm. And um, like, I guess you had the club party, like he'd throw a club at, uh, party at a club. So I guess his after after parties mm. were the ones that were wild. Mm. If have they you ever attended a Diddy party? I have. Mm. But just a club one. Ah. So it was, I can't remember what album they were releasing. So a friend, so before Bad Boy. So Bad Boy used to be signed to a label called Arista. Mm. So Arista, they used to have a street team in the UK. So us guys, myself, Semtex, and a few other guys, we were down with the Sony street team 
the rival street team was the Arista street team. Mm. So basically, the street team job was to promote the brands and stuff and, and the songs and the artists. So yeah, they, they used to they used to um they used to come in for a party and they come and he's releasing. I remember there's one party invite that was like a dollar a dollar and I did his face on the um. But these were club parties, like mm. as in just like you know, like you go to Milan or somewhere. Did you ever feel like it was kind of sus or? What? I've never, never seen that. Like, it's, it's a Diddy pipe. I never saw Diddy. Mm. He's a mastermind at creativity. It's one of those ones. Oh, no, yeah. No, yeah. you know, creativity, when it comes to promotion and creativity, you can't, you can't. Because, you know, he's crazy. literally, he's he's a business mm. mogul. Mogul. Like, yeah. And, you know, no one can say that, take that away from him. Facts. Yeah. But I think that, like, if you think about it, there must be other artists who are like, wow, okay. They done got Diddy. They said uh, your boy is next. I, I, Jay. Jay. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think Jay is. <laughs> I don't think so. He, I feel like, unfortunately, you know, when, when your name, there's, a, there's an African saying that goes along the lines of it's the one who has diarrhea that fights with the door at midnight. So, <laughs> no, the, the, no. He, I like that. Yeah, the affected person, you will, you will notice. Yeah. You will mm -hmm. see the sign. So his name has come up a bit too much right. in all these things. And plus, where he's at right now, the accusations, the mm -hmm. allegations that, uh, you know, are echoing in the culture. I feel like he, a time will come and he might be prepping right now. Because Bado Ayanga Waliseyama, ukiona mwenza kwa nanyolewa, chaku unatia maji. So uh, yeah. that means, you know, yeah. when it's your neighbor is being saved, you know you are next. Mm -hmm. So you start getting your affairs in order. But, but you know so right now he could be getting his things in order. Mm -hmm. do, you, yeah. do you know who I think and for, is... No, it, it's speculation, by the speculation. way. Yeah. Yeah. Speculation. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know who I think, though, is having a time of their life? And, and, and this person, I think, is someone at history. Hip-hop history is going to judge, like, properly and judge in a very... Um, Good way, mm. 50 Cent. Oh, oh yeah. he's having yeah. a blast. I yeah. think I think that like you know, 50 like when 50 came out in 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 with the album Get Rich or Die Trying, all those years ago, 20 plus years ago, right? 50 was always the underdog, mm. and he had that underdog mentality. Like I don't give a damn. Like I've been shot nine times. What else? Who should I be afraid of? Mm. So his first his first joint that really made noise was a joint called How to Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where when he, he was going talks about MCs. robbing, <laughs> he's gonna rob every single MC, right? And he's never even met most of them. And he had, at that point, <laughs> he never met them. Yeah. But he was like, "I'm gonna make a song that, like, everyone's gonna be like, who is this guy? Mm. And uh, how how to? If you get a chance to listen to it, it's a, it's a dope song. But he's always had the under, underdog mentality. And the thing about I, I think about Fifty is that even the way he talks about his relationship with his his son, his ex wife, and all that. He's real as hell. He's so yeah. raw. I always tell people, I, I read his book, Hustle Harder, and I didn't expect much from it. But yo, I would advise every young entrepreneur to, to, to read or listen to that book. Because mm. he dropped some serious jewels about, and about the crew dynamic and how it is to work within a space with your friends and entire women and all of these things. So, mm. so yo, it's a really good read. So I think 50 is the one who's... Who's having the time of his life? Oh yeah. Let me ask you guys something before we move away from this conversation. Who do you guys think are going to be the next big artists of the next generations? The same way right now, mm. like you see, we had the uh, Lil Wayne era, and during that time, Kina Badman was right. there, that Kina Nicki Minaj were coming up, Kina Drake were coming yeah. up, and all that. At the same time, on the other side of you know things, Kina right. J Kulo coming up, Kanye West was coming mm. up. Mm. So that was like if we took a class of maybe this era, these guys were popping like crazy. Right now we're in the Drake era, yeah. right? Right. And we're seeing now the comparisons, Kina J Cole, Kina Kendrick, Future, mm. and all that. So who do you guys think are going to be popping as the next generation of great artists mm. in the scene globally? I think, I think the next generation... Let's, maybe hip-hop-wise. Yeah. Yeah. Hip-hop-wise, I think the next generation of, of great artists in hip-hop not, are not necessarily going to be known for lyricism or, mm. or anything. I think they're going to be known... known, known I think that the currency is going to be originality. Mm. Okay. So I think that, I think that like the, the 21 savages of this, of mm. this earth... Mm. Um, are gonna be legendary, like legendary. And guys will be like, how can you say that? Because they're whatever. But I think that like he's he knows his strengths. He doesn't deviate from where he, where he, where he does. You can clearly hear what he's talking about. Mm. He has the odd catchy phrase that you'll listen to, you'll, you'll actually laugh at. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think that 21 is, is gonna be around for a while. Um, so you think he's picking up the mantle from like Drake? 
I wouldn't say pick up the mantle and because Drake's mantle is huge to pick up, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, big shoes to fit. But I think that, you know, as we go, the more we go on into, into Not just music, the mantle. <laughs> Wow. But the, but, but the mantle. Drake's mantle. <laughs> it's a heavy one. I think 21. Demand is stop it. <laughs> but I think, um, I think 21, I think. Um, Roddy? No, Roddy's I don't know. taking a box. I think Roddy, yeah. I think Roddy, Roddy came up, bam. And then like, I have not followed through. I think maybe, maybe Lil Dirk, maybe. Because mm. um, you see, I think, it's, I think it's more than just being in music now. Mm. It's music, it's fashion, it's entertainment, it's so many things, you know. Exactly. So, no, I, speak, speak. I, I yeah. think, mm. also, we're having a lot of, like, Eminem versions in hip-hop, right? Mm. Talk about, like, Jack Harlow. Jack hey, Harlow. Jack. Manila Baby is young. Yo. Oh, Jack's got bars, though. Jack oh, yeah, he Harlow does. is he does. different. Yeah. Like, he, he, and then he, he mixes up. He, he experiments with music. Yeah. Like, there's not one Jack Harlow tune that we, you will not hear, like, two different symphonies or, mm. you know, mm. different... Like, it's, it's two different genres in the same mix, yeah. two different symphonies, but in the same, in the same song. Mm. So he's, he's able to play around with music, and I think that's crazy. Also, mm. his lyricism mm. is amazing. Mm. Absolutely. I may, I may have a small crush on him, but... Small. You know. Mm. Yeah, what about you, Andy? <laughs> as big as Drake's mantle. <laughs> as big as Drake's mantle. Uh, interestingly, I'm thinking about the babes right now, bro. Okay. The oh. Glorillas, oh. the Latos. You think so? Latos. Pow, 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 yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glorilla, oh my I know, God. The babes are going Oh in. my God. Uh, when it comes to the mandem, it's really hard to tell. That's why I asked, because mm. I really can't think of anyone who is really coming top of my mind to take things or to be the person leading this group of mm -hmm. great artists into another generation, which also makes me think maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's time that that kind of approach or outlook on things ended. Mm. Maybe it's ending with Kina Drake. Right, you right, know, right. Because with the individuality that our artists are embracing, the same way Drake did. I think Drake popped more because he did something that he really wanted to do, got critiqued for it so much, but stuck to it. I remember, I think, I don't know how you felt about Drake starting to sing on records. I, I know you joke at about at it time, on air yeah, yeah, a yeah, couple yeah. of times, but... It's that that got him on a different lane and he stuck with it, pursued. He wasn't afraid of experimenting with different right. things. And now he's in a different lane mm -hmm. just different by himself. Yeah. You know, so more artists are now embracing that approach too, to their art. As mm. you said earlier on, Ashley, like J. Cole, he's more answerable to his calling than to his fan, yeah. right, than to right, his right. listener. Am I going to listen to you or okay. to my calling? Yeah, yeah. My calling is telling me, go this way. You guys want me to go that way. Yeah. So mm. what am I supposed to do? Mm. So if you decide to roll with the norm and what the culture is currently doing, you're going to fit in. Mm. Right, right. You know, you might disappear in the myriad of all the artists, but if you take your own path, which now they're doing, yeah. then I, I don't know if we're going to be having that conversation or approach of AK okay, who's popping right now. Of course, there are going to be a couple of you know yeah. those interesting mm. guys. But generally, I feel like it's a dying down conversation. Mm. We can't mm. even compare it because it's the same thing we, we usually talk about, like Gen Zs and millennials. Yeah. It's, it's literally the same conversation because mm. they're, they're figuring out how to do... Um, Hip hop music differently. Yeah. Right? They mm. have, like, even talk about Brent. Brent Fires is mm. literally a hip, he's a hip hop pop um, yeah. singer, songwriter, RB mm. um, musician. Mm. You can't necessarily place him in one or the other genre. Yeah. But he's popping off and he's recognizing now the different genres. So they're figuring out how to do their own mm. thing. Mm. And it's working out for them very different. Even if you talk about um, Blueface, mm. like these guys are, have made hip hop so different. Like the the stammer the rap, it's yeah, always chasing been there. after beats. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. always been there, but now it's like he heavy, it's heavy, heavy. Mm. Right. That they've made it an actual thing. Where what's her name? Um, the one who's the who gave birth recently and is always hanging out with Drake. 
Hmm? You know what I'm talking about? That could be oh, oh, uh, sexy, sexy red. red. That oh. could be anybody. Even sexy, oh, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Even sexy red, like mm. oh, sexy red is top of the list. Bro. Yo, yeah. sexy red is dope, but then it's you can't even call it. I don't even know if you can call it hip hop anymore. Oh yeah, she is doing hip hop. Like that's what I'm telling you. The conversation is more about the babes. Look at even R and B, Money Long. Yeah. Um, mm. Who else? Like I, I even wanted to say like more genres right now are getting the attention that they deserve from mm. the people that I they love, love. That. Mm. you know because look at how many even r&b concerts are happening as we speak at the yeah, moment facts. you know so everybody's embracing the villainium corner the gondwanas and the likes was your piano and uh, the afro electro music mm. guys for r&b are now like okay so even us let's, let's go, go. Let's you go. know guys for right. hip-hop they've been there doing their thing so i feel like with the embracing of this individuality everyone can just get to to do their thing do and thing. let's let's embrace each other and not uh, like i said the other time start hating on something that doesn't appeal to me when oh, I can be so yeah. busy, mm. you know, getting into something that I, think, I like. I think, I think one of yeah. the key things that one of the key things that I I I I tend to 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 live by is that I am aware that life is continually evolving. Yeah. And I'm aware that like things that were relevant to me 20 years ago are no longer relevant to people now. Or things that, and, and even for me, things that were important to me 20 years ago don't matter right now. Mm. And I think as long as you stay in that constant state of being able to learn, that teach, that teach, that it's called, you have to, you have to be teachable yeah. continually yeah. through life. And even every single day, it's like, I don't think a day or a week goes by when I don't learn something new from Andy or from yourself or from the crew, because that's just how, how you remain. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Not even relevant. Also, how you stay alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The yeah. longevity. All right, man. So listen, it has been the mics are open. Wait, wait, wait. Um, are we wrapping it on this? We're about. Yeah, I think it's a good place. Because uh, we got. We got Ven Venant threw a question. Someone said we should bring episode. open open mics. We got a back. So we do it on the mini sword. Do it on the mini sword. Ah, so, so, gotcha, gotcha. All right. Mm. So um, shout out to Odu uh, for for hosting us today. All of your businesses on one platform, simple, efficient, and affordable. Um. Just go to the website, odoo.com. Um, they are also based here in Westlands, and I'll be glad to hear from you as well. And uh, just check them out, man. If you want to build a website absolutely free, build it yourself. There are a whole suite of apps that you can uh, that you can use. On Odoo, the first one is free. I suggest you get the website builder first, because then you can continually improve your website building skills. Mm -hmm. Mics are open. My name is G-Money. Andy Young. Ashley. The link's in the bio. Adios, muchachos.